过载，最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，拉起，拉起，拉起，拉起，拉起，拉起。拉起，拉起，拉起，拉起，拉起。最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，拉起。最大过载，最大过载，拉起。最大过载，最大过载，拉起，拉起，拉起。拉起，拉起，拉起，拉起，拉起，拉起。最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，拉起。最大过载，最大过载，拉起。最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，拉起。最大过载，最大过载，拉起。最大过载，最大过载，拉起。最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，最大过载，拉起，拉起，拉起。左发起火，右发起火。Hey guys, welcome to the video. I know it's been a while since you've heard my voice, but I got this footage tonight because I just decided to go for a flight and feel like doing some BVR. Ended up ended up being a really really good display of BVR, and I decided to go over it. And I stayed up late to do this, so、uh, let's get into it. So I'm engaging BFG E Dub, and I'm using the PL12 missiles, which was a new addition to the J11 in this server. And one thing you'll notice is that the PL12 is honestly the superior missile、um, in DCS right now. It has great range, great kinematic reten energy retention. It's just all around an amazing missile.、Um, I also get off the first shot in this engagement, and. As you saw in the video, I lofted the missile just to give that extra bit of range、um, on target, and the energy differential between the PL12 and the AMRAM is honestly、uh, it's pretty big. He's still defending that PL12, and honestly, this AMRAM is pretty much dead in the water at this point. 
and I recognize this and I eventually begin to do my return. Uh, one thing that you always want to do in a BVR engagement, especially when it's too high altitude, too high energy uh, aircraft meeting in the middle, is you want to make sure you extend and drag out the missile. Um, because this does one of two things for you. Is one, it enables you to reset the fight. Now, as you can see, I was able to drag out that missile. Could I have turned in sooner? Yes, I could have, but that's not the point. The point is to create distance between you and the bandit so that when you, you retain that speed and when you turn back into the bandit, you have enough time to get situated, build up your situational awareness, and re-engage successfully. Um, so it's all about creating that buffer in that space. And as you can see here, once again, I get off for the first shot and I'm already going cold which puts him in a bad position because now he has a high energy missile heading his way and he's unable to get a shot off, which means he's defensive and I can go offensive a lot quicker than he can. So in this instance, we started off somewhat even, not really, but now at this point, I'm taking over the latter stage of the engagement. I extend, get some distance, make sure there's no return shots and I re-engage. Uh, another thing that you'll notice is that every time or each time we re-engage, the distance gets closer and closer um, because I'm, in a, I'm able to press him more and more. Uh, so as you can see, he's still defending and I'm checking, I'm flying level, making sure there's no incoming missiles and I'm turning in hot to recommit to the engagement while he's still defensive. Um, at this point in the engagement, he's honestly lost at this point because he every time he recommits, I'm getting a shot off on him. Um, and what you'll see here in a sec, you'll see why I did not win this engagement in just a moment. Because situational awareness is important, and you'll see why. So I get off another shot once again, beating him to the recommit. So he's going to have to go defensive. I recognize that I have two incoming bandits hot and I can't let them press within 50 kilometers or else they'll have me on my back foot and I will get shot down. So I put off my first missile on the F-18, but I recognize there's a bandit in trail. Now, even though I got the F-18 defensive, I know that if I do not press this F-15, he will get a shot off on me or he will press me and I will lose this fight. So I'm effectively BVR against three bandits, and I'm trying to create a buffer zone so that I can remain at a safe distance from all of them. Um, so these PL-12s act as a deterrent to keep those guys out of the fight so I can focus on the original bandit. And as you can see, it worked out really well. I beat off three different bandits thanks to the, the PL-12, which is an amazing missile, and I'm able to recommit on the original bandit. And honestly, those should have been two kills right there because those PO-12s were hot on both of those bandits, but they got very, very lucky. I mean, the energy retention on the PO-12 is ridiculous. It's a, it's a beautiful missile. Um, so I, like I said, you know, I'm dragging out all these AMRAMs. They're not, they're nothing to really be concerned of because I know the distance and the altitude of these bandits. And I especially knew the F-18's missile wasn't going to do much because he didn't have any energy. He was he wasn't high enough energy to be launching an AMRAM at that distance anyway. So his missile, as you can see, it just teetered off early. Um, so I've effectively knocked two bandits out of the fight, and I still beat this F-16 back to the recommit. I still beat him back to it. Um, and the only reason this fight was as short-lived as it was is because I ran out of missiles. <laughs> um but I just thought this would be a really good demonstration of uh, just keeping good situational awareness in a fight and recognizing incoming threats and knowing when and how to escape. Um, so at this point, you know, I could have returned the base. I pretty much did what I needed to do, beat off three bandits. I'm out of missiles. Um, but you know how I am. Uh, it's no fun if you just kind of call it quits. So. I tried to press my luck here and see if I could, you know, notch this guy and maybe get a PL, uh, 8 kill, something like that. Uh, it didn't go my way, but, you know, it's all fun. Uh, but I just wanted to make this video because, honestly, it was just a 
great demonstration of BVR, um, playing it safe, you know, and just honestly being smart with your, your movement and your, uh, I guess, tactical plan. Um, but yeah, this is probably one of the first official, you know, quality videos I've made. Um, so I hope you guys uh, learned something from it. You know, it was pretty interesting, lots of fun. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Actually, I'm not done yet. This AMRAM evasion is textbook. He fired this AMRAM at a distance that I should not, from an energy standpoint, it would reach me. Um, but the way I set this AMRAM up, I'm able to avoid it. So let me, I'm going to rewind this back so we can go over it again. And can you tell this is the, it's been a while since I've commentated before. I, I swear I said honestly like five times. Jeez. Um, but let's go over this again. So let's see. He fires his AMRAM. It's got a lot of energy. I'm under 10 miles. And like I told you guys before, under 10 miles is no good. So I put my nose up because I want the AMRAM to take elite intercept upward. I know it's going to go up. Then I bring my nose back down because I want it to now point his noise back downward. The motor on this AMRAM is more than likely out at this point. And then I pull back up again and the AMRAM can't keep up with the turn because it doesn't have the boost or the energy to follow. So I pretty much set the AMRAM up to follow me and take a lead intercept upward and then fight gravity. And then I force it to come back down and then go back up again. Um, but yeah, hopefully that helps. Thanks, guys.